Good morning, and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodeholt. When I had the opportunity to go to Israel in the year 2000, we were going in February, so one of the big questions was what kind of coat and clothing we might need. I was interested to learn that Jerusalem and Charleston are on almost exactly the same latitude. So as far as temperature goes, what we have here is pretty much what they have there. So it might be chilly, but it wouldn't be frigidly cold. This week, since we've had some recent cold weather, we are looking at some times in the Bible when cold weather is part of the story. Today's story is actually rather significant, and it comes from the time of the prophet Jeremiah. The story takes up the whole of chapter 36 in Jeremiah, so I'll summarize some of it here. Jeremiah received a message from the Lord, and he got his scribe, a man named Baruch, to write down his words. In those days, not everyone could read or write, and there was a professional class of people called scribes who specialized in being able to write for other people. And that's what Baruch did. And Jeremiah used him often to write down the words that God gave him. This time, Jeremiah told Baruch to write down his message and then to go to the temple and read the words in the hearing of everyone. Jeremiah himself couldn't go because he had been excommunicated from the temple for saying things that the people didn't want to hear. He had been saying that the people needed to return to God from how they had forsaken God and that if they didn't, God was going to punish Israel. The Babylonians would come and conquer them. Jeremiah had been saying, and no one wanted to hear that message. We, preferred, we prefer soft, easy messages that affirm the ways we have been living. So in order not to hear what Jeremiah was saying, they kicked him out. In his place, Jeremiah sent Baruch. Well, Baruch did just what Jeremiah said, and as he read the words of God given to Jeremiah, the people grew alarmed. This was an important message. One man in the crowd heard it and went to the king's advisors and told them all about it. So they sent for Baruch and had Baruch read it again for them in the antechamber of the king. They were alarmed too and decided that the king needed to hear this himself. So they told Baruch to leave the scroll and go hide with Jeremiah where no one could find them. The king at the time was a man named Jehoiakim. So they took the scroll Baruch had left, and one of them read it to the king while the others looked on. That's when we come to verses 22 and 23. Now the king was sitting in his winter apartment. It was the ninth month, and there was a fire burning in the brazier before him. As Jehudi read three or four columns, the king would cut them off with a penknife and throw them into the fire in the brazier until the entire scroll was consumed in the fire that was in the brazier. His advisors urged him to listen to the scroll and not to burn it, but Jehoiakim ignored them, just as he chose to ignore the word and warning of God. If you'll allow me, let me jump ahead to the end quickly and say that what happened was that God told Jeremiah to get another scroll and say all the words again and have Baruch write them down again. Jeremiah did this and then added a few choice words for Jehoiakim himself. All this happened when it was cold. Did you notice that? The king was in his winter apartment and there was a fire burning for warmth. And perhaps what that means for us is that we can ignore God's word no matter what season it is. And we do, you know. Just like Jehoiakim, we listen to the parts of God's word that we agree with and that go down easily. And far too often those parts of God's word that challenge us or aren't what we want to hear, we ignore just as much as if we had burned them in the fire. The word of God stands forth forever, and whether or not we burn it, whether or not we ignore it, the word of God is still there. The word of God is still true. What we should do is listen. 
what we should do is change. And maybe there's one other thing here too. Maybe the times when we should most listen to God's word is exactly in those times when we struggle with the message. Perhaps our complacency needs to be confronted. Perhaps we should be aroused from our sleep. Perhaps our lethargy and comfort need to be disturbed. God's word invites us to see things in new ways, in God's way, and that often calls us to change. You see, if we are content to see things only our way, then who we are really worshiping is ourselves. Thanks for watching, and remember to let this day belong to God.